So you have a media interview coming up and you want to make the most of it. To help you sharpen your communication skills, we're talking with Susan Blake. In her career as a TV news anchor and reporter in one of the top five markets, San Francisco, and nationally on HGTV, Susan has interviewed foreign leaders, top U.S. politicians, and Hollywood celebrities. She has reported from the floor of political conventions and worked on documentaries in India, Japan, the Middle East, and Mexico. What I guess we want to get to, the, what are the most important uh, things that people need to know if they're going to be uh, interviewed on, uh, you know, for either a, a television program or even on the web? So if someone is called or they're making a request to interview you, there are some of the very basic questions that you need to ask. You need to know um, really who, who is the reporter that's calling you and what organization do they work for and how is that interview actually going to be used? And there are a lot of different things to take into consideration with that. First of all, is it print or is it on camera? Right. What kind of media is it? It could also be radio as well. And is this something that's going to be used on the evening news? Um, are you going to be put uh, on an interview program where you're on for 30 minutes talking about a subject? Or are you on with a panel of people? Uh, talking about a number of different topics. If this is a piece for the evening news, they may talk to you for four or five minutes on camera as a, a preparation interview. They're probably only going to be pulling 15 seconds or maybe 10 seconds, you know, a couple of different times to put in a package that ultimately at best would be a minute and 30 seconds. So they're going to weave a story around that. What are the most important things uh, that people need to, as soon as they get the call, what do they need to, to start thinking about? So think about it in terms of maybe um, one to three messages that you really, you know, at most maybe three messages uh, in a typical interview that may just be going for five minutes. I've got three things I really want to focus on and um, I want to, you know, bring these po points home. Think about in terms of uh, really being knowledgeable, making sure you understand the market and what you're going up against. How do I uh, separate myself or my company from someone else? This is an opportunity for me to use this to really explain something or to really market my organization. As well, you probably uh, want to do enough research that you know your subject really well? Are there any aspects that maybe you're not aware of? So you just need to make sure you're really comfortable and knowledgeable. Once you have that knowledge, that brings you more of the confidence of what it is you're going to talk about. So one last thing on preparation. A reporter is coming out to your, your place, uh, you know, from a news organization. Um, they might want to shoot some additional material. T t yeah. Talked about how people. Anytime you're talking about on camera, you know, where you're adding that other dimension to the visual, and so oftentimes they will ask you, "Do you have a photograph of this, or do you happen to have B-roll? Anything that would support your story that you're telling that is a visual component." If you're marketing yourself and you're using this interview as an opportunity to tell your story and market yourself, then begin to think, as a business, do I already need to be shooting B-roll? Or what are some of those visual supports? If you have any other marketing materials, that's always something that's good to think about. Also, that helps tell your story. Like remember, we talked about the preparation and what are your one or two or three points that you really want to talk about. If you have the visual support to go with that, those two can come together and really tell a strong, powerful story for you. Right, and having me on the producer's end, sometimes if, if, the, if, if the business owner can tell me what to shoot, so we're there with the camera, it's like, oh, shoot this person doing this, it helps to tell my story. Or if you have, you know, if, it's a, if, if it is a restaurant that you're just opening up and, um, you know, maybe it was like your grandmother inspired you with all of her great Italian or Mexican food or whatever it was, it's like, you know, hey, here's a picture of my grandmother. Oh, yeah, you know, this is good. where the story started for me. That really gets into that personal component of, wow, 
this person really has a great idea and this means something to them. It becomes a personal story then that you're sharing with other people and that's always a great connection. Yeah, and you it know, helps the producer to tell the story. Yeah, exactly. People sitting at home listening to an interview are looking for something that they can connect with that is going to speak to their heart or is going to speak to them in a way that then your story or your product becomes memorable to them. Check out our full interview with Susan Blake, where among other things, she tells us how to integrate your voice and body language to communicate your message. But it's speaking to what it is you're saying. So it's a filter that everything is going through when the bottom line is you want your, them to hear your message. So the value in practicing is that you are getting all of these other layers of your voice and the body language you know, um, fine-tuned so that they can hear what it is you have to say. 